so we are now doing <clears throat> going to do our first layer of oil varnish uh, up until now we've been doing spiritus or alcohol uh, varnishes so I do a sort of hybrid I do uh, alcohol in the beginning as you've seen because I want to really um, control the I want to get these dramatic contrasts. As you can see, we have a really, really good brown going on. Um, so, um, I've, I don't know what time it is, but I've sat here for probably about half an hour just staring at it and trying to decide whether I should do a more of the dirty yellow and sort of get it because it's brown, it's a really nice brown, and then you can see the, the yellow layers underneath. Um, but what I've decided to do is just roll with the oil, because um, if I do too much yellow and then I'm adding red, you get the orange demon. So um, I'll start by controlling my hair. Um, I, I grow my hair long on purpose at the top so I can put a pencil in it. Um, and it's a cool trick because then you just always have a pencil like uh, I'm a pencil person. I hate digital things um, I don't hate computers because I but I hate um, I Print everything I write everything down um, The reason for this also is hair is your enemy, right? <laughs> At this phase if you have a hair, it's over <laughs> So I'm looking for my hair net. The best thing to do would be to wear a hair net. But I just, yeah, there's my hair net. All right. Okay, so what I have going on now is these are the best varnishes that you can get in the world. And you can only get them from Jose. So what we do is we have a barbecue on his terrace and he cooks uh, his own oil varnish um, and let me just say in case you're if you're considering trying to cook your own oil varnish don't do it <laughs> unless you really know what you're doing because it's very flammable and it's very difficult so I am thankful to Jose Cataria the great violin maker for giving me this precious precious stuff um, if you want to do oil, you're probably going to have to buy it or you're going to have to cook it outside and you're going to have to sh have someone show you who knows what they're doing. And you're going to use a digital thermometer, one that's going to, um, you have to be very, very careful, careful. Um, yeah, because it can explode in your face. And I know people, uh, Jose knows people who have been disfigured, like, you know, it boom it will explode so don't do it get it from Jose <laughs> or you can buy it from um, Joe Robeson he's a great he makes really great uh, varnishes for sale anyway so what I have going on here is I have all of the colors of, of uh, Jose's varnishes that he's giving me and you can see there <clears throat> this is just you can see there's color in it and some of these I've added color. So I've got this one with, which is a clear. I think you can see it's, it has some color. And that color is from cooking the, cooking the coliform, um, which is this stuff. Right? So you cook that and I think he cooks it for at least 48 hours. Um, <clears throat> But because I want, we're moving towards a red brown. We have a good brown, we have a dirty yellow, and I'm not prepared. <laughs> All right, so I need to fill my lavender oil, <clears throat> or I can just take it from here, actually. So I'm looking at all of the, the varnish, all of the oil varnishes that I have from my brother. And I'm gonna go with this one with the, it has the most color already on it 
Um, and it smells so good. It's the most divine smelling thing. But I can see it's really thick, which in this case is good because we want to add color. So I'm going to take some lavender oil from Hammerall, which usually I put in here for more control, but you can do it this way. I'll start with a, a light amount. And wow, this is where you can <laughs> really screw up. I am considering what to do here. We know that we want brown, we know that we want oxide brown, so let's just start with that. So I'm mixing this and I don't think we've ever done this. Yeah, this is the this is oxide brown, transparent oxide brown, very important. Um There will be many layers also. <clears throat> how many oil, how many layers of oil that you do is uh, up to you. They say that too many affects the tone and I believe them because your plate is vibrating. Yeah. And if you have a lot of gunk on it, it's gonna, right? In theory, they say, um, but we're also going to be removing um, a lot at the end. So yeah, this is just oxide alone and it's it's going to be pretty, that's, it's pretty orangey. You can see, I'll take my word for it. So I'm going to add bitumen, same thing. I'm, I'm just all the, while I'm doing this, I'm thinking, should I add a little bit of yellow? <laughs> Because I, my main <clears throat> consideration is avoiding the orange demon. Ah, but another thing I was thinking of is really the best way to do this, if, if you're just starting out, is to make a, a notebook of everything that you've done with all the proportions. Um, but this, I'm doing a sort of freewheeling rock and roll style. Um, well, because I've done this hundreds of times, and um, I've never done the same varnish twice. I prefer it that way. Um, let's take a look at that. Right. So now you take your duck <laughs> and you put some of this. This is super thick, actually. Ah, another very important thing is looking for my cicatives. Here it is. This is a cobalt 
dryer. Or a secative, and what that is is it's a uh, you don't want to use too much of it, really, just a drop. And this helps it to dry because we're not using ultraviolet. Yeah, to explain, um, actually, my brother Jose actually gave me UV lights as well, but I, I stopped using them because um, I'm a little worried about the um, the health of it, you know. And also, it, it tends to heat up the instrument; it makes it warm. So this 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 kind of bothers me. So all right, so I have this golden nectar of the gods and I'm going to add my color color to it my lavender oil and let's see how that feels This viscosity is something you're gonna have to do by feel. Um, no, this is too thin now. Right, oh, <laughs> that looks really good. It's actually really close to what I want. Um, Actually, you could just use this straight on, this varnish, but it's a little um, orange. There's, it's a little, this has pigment in it already. So, right, this, that's, more of the consistency that I want. So this 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 was like sort of really thick honey, you know, um, and that's kind of difficult to spread around. So what I'm going to do is take a scrap piece of wood. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's what it looks like. Yeah, I'm thinking. like here oh yeah oh that <laughs> so that looks nice It's nice. It's a little bit orangey, but there's that's there's a good orange and there's a bad orange. Bad orange is pineapple. Good orange is golden. You know, sort of antiquey. That I'm gonna go. That is, I love this. I could add a little bit more um pigment. To make it darker, but because the the instrument is already so brown, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna go. 
So with oil, you, you have a lot of time to spread it around. Not too much time, um, but you have enough time. Um, and a good thing to remember is do your edges like this at the end of the brush cycle. Yeah. I'm leaving my bottom, yeah, because I'm going to be working that. Oh, that is nice. Oh, thank you, Jose. Whoa. Yeah, so when you watch videos and you see people varnishing and it just looks so easy, they're just, you know, blah, 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 blah. it's because oil is easy. And the only, the only trouble you can get into is hair or, um, or puddles, you know, and what you can do is, um, is sort of cross, you know, even it out. Plenty of time now. This is not alcohol. Yeah. This is really perfect. What I have going on now, the viscosity is perfect. The color could be a little bit darker, but again, this is my first layer of oil, so do my edges. And you're looking at the reflection, you know, to see, you're looking for ugly puddles or uneven spaces. Plenty of time, I can even go back here and I can feel my brush based upon how it's sort of dragging that it's getting a little bit dry so it's, you've got your yeah you've got your paper towel ah another rule close your containers right this was open close your containers Get everything out of the way. Let's get all this junk out of the way. Tools and sandpaper and uh, voodoo dolls. Get them out of the way. Yeah, you know what? Let's get my color out of the way too. We don't need this, right? Get it out of the way. Anything you're not using, Vink. Right, because you can have a big accident. This is gonna look so amazing. Whoa! Now I can still be faced with the orange demon, yeah? Okay, so now I got a nice paper towel soaked in lavender oil. I got my duck. Now you don't need, really need to see this area. Everything's perfect right now. This is all. This is all perfect. I feel. That I feel confident. So I'm gonna roll, I have the, yeah, it's a little bit orangey. Let's see what it looks like on the top. It's a little orangey, but that's a good, that is a good orange. Again, just the, the just the tip of my brush.
That is a good orange. Well, it's a golden, it's a sort of golden brown orange. Uh, when you're doing your sound holes, you want to use less because you get that sort of, when you scrape across the surface, you know, it can make a puddle. And it, this, it will be obvious where you've been before now at this phase, like because of the gloss. Yeah. I need coffee. Can you set up an intravenous coffee thing for me, Bronco? Sure. Just, uh, <laughs> um, just fill the, fill the thingy, the level. No, I have coffee. I just can't touch it right now, and I just felt a sort of like withdrawal symptom. But you want me to make one, right? No, I have plenty of coffee. Oh, I need I it intravenously. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, intravenous, intravenous. coffee. Ah, but can you help me? Yes. Flip the record. I should. I keep hearing with this music like lyrics made with the with the four forbidden words constantly. Ah. I can't say. <laughs> rah, 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 rah. Well, I won't say. It, but. Oh man, this this record is amazing. Um, it's um, well, it's Praetorius. You are filming, aren't you? I yeah, know. yeah, yeah, we're making a video. We're, uh... Sorry, I, I'm, tr I'm just concentrating. This record is so great. Um, we're going to talk more about it, I think. Um, it's actually a kind of sacred um, record. Um, and we have the, the ones that are sacred and the ones that are less sacred. Yeah, again, I'm looking. I'm looking at it this way to see the glo uh, if any areas have been um, built up. You know, if there's too much. And my varnish is feeling a little. My brush is feeling a little dry. Wow, that looks good. That is looking really, really good. Yeah, I'm feeling that my brush is dragging, so I'm going to put some more lavender oil on. Yeah. Oh, another thing is the temperature of the room is important. You you really cannot varnish in winter unless you unless you're going to be heating, very, you know. Because the viscosity of the oil is also affected by temperature, of course, just like a car engine. That's why when you're, um, I used to have a motorcycle. It was a, well, I had 10 motorcycles. I, I think at one point I had 10 motorcycles and five pianos or more, I can't remember. I had, I had a sort of parts situation going on too where... Uh, anyway, one of my motorcycles um, 
had a cylinder, uh, no, a valve, a valve cover gasket leak. So oil was actually spitting out onto my cowboy boot. This was in, a, this was in New Orleans, obviously. You don't wear cowboy boots in Spain, or do you? Guilty. <laughs> You're guilt. You wear them. Not anymore. I want to get some cowboy boots, man. I just thought that was kind of cheeky, you know, like in Vienna. I was like, no, nah, I can't wear cowboy boots. Well, the hell yeah, you can wear cowboy boots anywhere, right? You should. That's the reason to do it. Yeah. Yeah, you know why the cowboy boot was invented? Be, but to, so you don't get snake bites. Exactly. Because a, a snake cannot bite through a boot, right? <laughs> anyway, so... um. I'm a really good motorcycle mechanic, if I may say so myself. As long as it's a motorcycle engine that I understand. Ah, see, I just put too much. You probably can't see it. But we got plenty of time, plenty of time with oil. We can just enjoy the rich, beautiful smell of the golden nectar. It smells so good. Oof. So anyway... The oil is leaking onto my cowboy boots, so I just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put uh, straight, um, what's it called, uh, STP oil treatment. STP, it comes in, a, comes in a blue plastic jar, and it's just thick like honey. It's actually a little bit thicker than this varnish. And what it does is it protects your engine when it gets really hot, and it gets hot it gets hot is uh, uh, it's really really hot in New Orleans in the in the summer I mean you take a shower and five minutes later you're drenched in sweat so I decide I'm just gonna put straight STP oil treatment in my motorcycle and just roll with it roll, roll with that you know just pure thick honey because you want your engine to you don't want it the thin the, the thinner uh, your oil is the less protected your engine parts are, right? So the same thing goes with oil varnish. The colder it is, the thicker your varnish is going to be. So really you should, in the winter, you should go and, and take all your jars and kind of police them. Um, maybe add a touch of lavender oil and make sure that they're... Um, they're not drying up. You know, I don't know. So again, I feel that my brush is, let me just think about this. I see some areas that are uneven color. Yeah, I sort of blend together. I mean, you don't have infinite time because it is actually drying now very slowly. What's going on here? Yeah, an apprentice, an apprentice should be putting lavender on, on my, uh... <laughs> what was I saying? Yeah, so you need to heat your uh, workshop. <coughs> Gazoon tights. You need to heat your workshop in the winter. If you're going to varnish. Better yet, just don't varnish in the winter. That's a better idea. sneeze dude don't worry yeah but I mean too many times it was <laughs> I really don't care this is just to teach my friend I don't I don't okay. care about the people I will sneeze full throttle then. sneeze oh, full, full throttle, full throttle. Full far sneezing. <laughs> wow this looks so are you getting sick you think nah no okay this is like everyday occurrence in me ah okay it's naughty in the morning Maybe it's like the um, spring thing, because I believe this uh, is... Could be. That could be, have something to do. Yeah. I, uh, or I could be reacting to some of your substances, but... Ah, yeah, well, you can crack possible. a window if you want. Nah, I'm alright. 
I'm impervious. I, I mean, well, I love the smell, but yeah, yeah. I, it doesn't it doesn't offend. I mean, not as a smell. Well, if you look at the jar of lavender oil, it actually has a warning not to breathe it. <laughs> I'm just like, hmm, this smells good. <laughs> In that case, maybe uh, I'll open slightly. I don't know. Yeah, go for it. Anyway, I'm almost done. I'm not gonna film me varnishing the whole cello because we're at half an hour. I mean. Although I enjoy the sort of philosophical conversations. Plenty of time. Yeah, so you're looking at two things. I'm looking down the instrument to see the gloss, and I'm looking at it straight on to see how much color is there. Because if you do too thick in one spot, it will obviously be more more color. You know, so. Wow. Ah, again. Okay, so I'm police, policing my F holes. I'm making sure that there is no sort of buildup, you know, because if you go over uh, uh, the surface, the brush can sort of drag and leave a, a puddle around there. So I don't see anything. Okay. Yeah. That, I'm really, I am really, really happy with that. And that's only the first layer. So the next thing, um, well, I'm gonna finish doing this. Um, the next layer is gonna be, uh, you gotta think really carefully because we do have a little bit of orange going on. Um, but because the brown underneath was so dark um, that it's not a, it's not the demon orange, it's not the fruit orange, you know, that's, and trust me, he will pop up, that you're going to get the demon when you varnish. Um, yeah, so the, we're getting, to, I, I'm not even sure if, if I can get to where I want to go, I want this sort of red, red, red brown. Um, and you don't always succeed. You don't always match the, I'm sure that some makers do. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with where we are now. I'm a little bit concerned when we add red, what's gonna happen, but um, I guess we're gonna have to find out. And the rosette is looking really good too. Okay, I guess that's it for now. Um, we will continue with in three around three days. Like I say, I don't. You can use UV lights, but um, uh, I stopped using them because uh, I'm worried about my health. I'm worried about my health. <laughs> um, now I'm more worried about the the heat inside because you have to have if you're using UV lights. This is another thing for people who are watching this, if anyone's watching, is you cannot, you don't want to look at ultraviolet light. It's not good for you. Yeah, that's another thing. So, um, yeah, don't do that. Don't cook your varnish. And that's how we'll end this video. Don't cook your own varnish unless you know what the hell you're doing. Um, and um, if you're using UV lights, you need to build a chamber that is light proof. And you turn it off and on from the in, from the outside, so safety is safety first, right? All right, see you in three days.